are talking about last night's presidential debate that happened in Simi Valley, California. This second debate felt far more hostile, felt much more combative. I felt like people were trying so hard to be Donald Trump in 2016 on the debate stage last night that it was far more about attacking one another, throwing insults at each other, calling other people stupid, come whatever cost that may be a result of that. I saw all of this happening and unfolding in real time and I was just unimpressed to be honest with you whereas the first debate I felt like there were key standout moments from almost every single candidate that they had my attention they gripped me I was leaning forward I was listening intently to everything they were saying and I was like yes you got me something like that would win my vote last night I failed to have any single moment with the exception of one last night was just mid extremely lackluster i was really unimpressed with the performance from many of these candidates not because they had bad ideas per se but because it just felt so political theater almost like an episode out of veep or parks and recreation last night sure i agree that movies should be more faithful to the books that they are based on but what does that have to do with this election all my movies are based on books and anyone who even rubs their hands on a leather jacket should be tried for murder. It just came across really childish to me and very combative in a non-effective way. Whereas Donald Trump attacking other candidates in 2016 came across really effective, right? He came across as a fighter. He came across as somebody willing to pack a punch. And last night just looked like the child's version of pretending to do that. Social media really is the future. And when you're watching this TV style debate where everyone gets a 15 second soundbite to answer questions that to be honest, they don't even really get any Anyway, because they just talk over each other the entire time. What we are really hungry for is someone who's willing to communicate to us in a language that we understand in a venue where we are already present like TikTok or like other social media platforms and without trying to make things sound like scripted TV sound bites. We are so far beyond that era of media and information, but you wouldn't be able to tell because every single candidate with the exception of one up on that stage took it upon themselves to make it seem like if you're getting your information through social media or through live streams like this one, you are stupid. So I ended up making a reaction video to that that's making some waves over on TikTok in particular, but wanted to share my thoughts with you on that question right now. Like many of you sitting here watching the Republican presidential debate, and I just continue to be baffled about how truly ignorant and or unaware politicians are about TikTok. Everybody up on that stage, everybody in Congress, everybody in the executive branch loves to repeat this common talking point fed to them from lobbying firms out of Washington DC that your data, your private information, your name and contact info is in the hands of the CCP. And that's exactly what was said by Nikki Haley last night when they were asking Vivek Ramaswamy about TikTok. She said, you're in bed with China and you've done business with China and you're pro-China if you use TikTok, which is so far beyond the ridiculousness of this situation, it's so difficult for me to even wrap my head around. In reality, there is not a single documented example ever of the Chinese Communist Party get, getting your data, accessing your private data from TikTok. Never. There's not one example of that, even though there are countless other documented examples of Meta, for example, selling your data to the CCP and Russia. So let's be incredibly clear about this. They don't really care about your data security. What they're really worried about is this is the one platform that they, A, don't own stock in, and B, isn't in bed with the United States government because it's not a United States based company to begin with and therefore has much different algorithms and different ways for people to share information than what we have here in the United States. So the double standard there just bothers me to no freaking end, in my opinion, but I digress. Clutches pearls, especially of your children if you use this dangerous app. Even though if we start thinking with our brains for like half a second, I'm pretty sure the CCP could get your name and contact info because they make our phones if they really wanted to anyway. Let alone the fact that there is not one shred of evidence, no documented example ever recorded of TikTok giving your data to the CCP. But there are countless documented examples of Meta and Twitter selling your data to China, Russia, and even your own United States government to spy on you. But we're not worried about that. 
And just as she's so smart, who is this chick? A reminder, all of this is all talking points in order to get legislation passed that's currently being debated in Congress called the Restrict Act to ban TikTok, which actually doesn't even mention banning TikTok at all in the legislation, but is instead a modern Patriot Act to spy on you and regulate what we are allowed to post on the internet. Uh, and even treat you as an American citizen as a foreign enemy to the United States government if you pose a threat to national security. What could possibly go wrong? But everyone attacking people like Vivek Ramaswamy for hanging out with TikTok influencers or trying to utilize the power of TikTok to get your message out there is so culturally unaware of the power of grassroots social media, especially for our generation. There is a generation right around the corner that is soon to be the largest voter bloc America has ever seen, that is voting with record turnout, that is very passionate about taking an active role in determining the future of politics and culture alike in our country. And if you call them stupid for consuming information in a new generational way, and simultaneously refuse to go where those people are, they probably are not going to vote for you. I honestly feel like this should not be that hard to understand. It is fascinating to me that people continue to attack TikTok for your data privacy and data security. And this is becoming such a massive talking point in the 2024 election cycle on both sides with both political parties when those same people fall completely silent when, I don't know, what we talked about yesterday comes into fruition, when our own intelligence agencies admit that they are rolling out their own AI programming to sort through all of your data through all 18 US intelligence agencies while they are simultaneously labeling American citizens as enemies to the United States government and as radical extremists. Can we just talk really quick about the DeSantis smile? This happened in Milwaukee. It happened again last night in California. I think probably he had somebody on his campaign staff or in a focus group tell him he needs to smile more and like relax more. But the smiling more is just coming across so uncomfortable like so uncomfortable standing up on a stage being in front of people the creepy smile memes are just to die these things <laughs> and let me tell you what's gonna happen I can't. you keep doing that no one up here is gonna call you donald trump anymore we're gonna call you donald duck All right. you mentioned cringe 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 if Chris Christie genuinely thought he was going to be making some massive impact or difference by calling Donald Trump Donald Duck, do you realize that most people can't even remember the last time they've seen Donald Duck in something? Like, hello? You just made yourself seem so old. But I gotta admit, I'd, I've been sleeping with a teacher for 38 years. No one needed to know that, Mike! We know you're married. We know you have children and grandchildren. Why tell us about your sex life on the debate stage? Cringe. I Let's have a policy debate. What's going on? I'll, I'll Let us have a policy debate. For the record, this was what 75% of last night sounded like. It was people screaming over each other. You couldn't understand a single word that anybody was saying because the moderator and multiple candidates were all talking at the exact same time. And it just felt so produced for TV fake fighting. It was the weirdest vibe that could have possibly existed up on that stage. And I found it really distracting, to be honest with you, and really a turnoff for every single one of these candidates. I favor ending birthright citizenship. That was a huge standout moment last night. Vivek Ramaswamy said that he was in favor of ending birthright citizenship for children of illegal immigrants, uh, that in order to be naturalized into the United States, just like any other immigrant, you would have to pass the citizenship test. Uh, that probably will never come to fruition, even if he is elected president of the United States because it's just such a nuanced political issue. But I have to say, he said two things last night, uh, three things, I guess, if you include TikTok, that really did stand out to me as someone willing to bring our country forward and do uncomfortable things or try to suggest politically impossible things in order to try to bring the conservative side of things forward into the future. The first being, I'm glad he defended TikTok and social media as a means to communicate with people. The second was this birthright citizenship comment. I think that was a really uh, forward thinking way to handle the immigration crisis. Every single other answer that was uh, 
provided by all of the candidates or even asked by the moderators of the debate, uh, handled so many different sides of the immigration issue, but nobody really had a solution for how we can prevent this from taking over the United States population moving forward. I thought ending birthright citizenship seems like a really fair and reasonable way to try to disincentivize people from coming here just for birth tourism and to give birth. I thought that was a really interesting concept. It didn't get nearly enough airtime, but I did appreciate that idea. I honestly, every time I hear you, I feel a little bit dumber for what you say. That was in regards to the TikTok comment. Nikki Haley uh, interrupted Vivek Ramaswamy and said, I feel a little bit dumber every time you say certain things. That was regarding re reaching the next generation on social media. She came across pretty combative to me yesterday. Whereas a few weeks ago in Wisconsin, I felt like she could rise above the group of men screaming at each other. She had that comment quoting Margaret Thatcher saying, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman that came across incredibly effectively uh, in Milwaukee. But for whatever reason, maybe it was advice that she received. Maybe it was focus groups or her own campaign telling her she needed to go more on the attack. She came across extremely combative and not as level headed to me uh, last night compared to a few weeks ago. The biggest takeaway that I had watching last night, other than the scripted political theater, fake outrage and hostility thing, it just felt so outrageous that it couldn't possibly be true, was that at at least one point, if not the entire time that I was watching the potential next president of the United States standing up on that stage talk, I noticed a massive cultural disconnect between with what our politicians are wanting to accomplish in this country and what ordinary people are going through and experiencing living in 2024 America. I say it all the time and I will keep saying it until I am blue in the face and more and more people are aware of what's going on. We live in in the upside down. In the 2020s, in a post-COVID reality, we have arrived in a post-truth, post-modern society. We do not live in a time where most of these people originally came into positions of political power, and we have to be willing to go where culture is today if we are serious about changing it from the inside out. I feel like I'm watching debates and or campaigns from the early 2000s or 1990s. And it's hard to imagine why when many of these people have been involved in politics longer than I have been alive. But like Donald Trump was able to come into the fold in 2016 and totally disrupt the system because he was aware of what was happening in a new reality for the average person in 2016, I really think we desperately need someone who is aware of the fact that we live in a different world today in 2023 going into 2024 than we did in 2016. 